Hey horse lovers, welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. My name is Shay and today I'm going to answer a question that I've been getting quite frequently and it's a big one. Am I selling my Gypsy Vanner Mushu? Well, in today's video, I'm going to discuss that. So I'm going to go out to the field, get him, do a little grooming session and we'll talk about it. Right now it is absolutely disgusting weather. So you saw how we had like the Arctic blast, crazy wind, we got some snow. Well, now it's all melted and it's horrendous. Horrendous. Look at this. Why? It's like raining right now. It's literally January. It should be snowy and cold. It's never been this muddy like this time of year. It gets muddy like this for a little bit in the spring, then it dries up. But oh my gosh, it just everything melted. We've been getting tons of rain. It literally went from like negative 30, 35 wind chill all the way up to 50. It's supposed to be 60 degrees tomorrow. What? So I'm not complaining about that like temperature, but in regards to the footing and the paddocks, it kind of sucks. I know I'm bringing you all in to eat and dry off a little bit. Miss Bagheera, she's been such a sweet girl. Hi, baby girl. I know. I'm going to feed you. You coming in soon. Mushu. <laughs> you ready to come in? He's like, no. Whoops, I forgot to grab a halter. I guess that's something you need to catch a horse. Well, on most occasions. <laughs> Koa, what do you think? Oh, you're so pretty. I love you. Isn't he gorgeous? He's like a blue Merle. I'm obsessed with him. When I saw him, I got him when he was like three months old. I was like, I have to have him. Like, I literally didn't even ask Kyle. I just like bought him because he's so freaking cute. You good boy. He's the best puppy. We gotta show him your tricks sometime. I've taught Koa like so many tricks. I'll have to show you sometime. They're really fun. I spent a lot of time training him when he was a puppy. All right, let's go get the Mr. Mushu. Hi, you guys are so beautifully groomed. My goodness, look at that. Why? It's not supposed to be like this right now the realities. And if most of you understand horses, like they get dirty, they get muddy. I'm not here to show you like fake stuff. Like this is real life. This is the reality of owning horses, especially in Michigan where we get all types of weather. So I'm not just going to show you the sparkly, beautiful, clean horses. Nope. This is the reality right here. Oh yeah. I love, just love those feathers, boy. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Mushu, why do you look exceptionally small right now? I don't understand why. <laughs> I'm going to feed Mushu first, and then we'll do a grooming session because obviously it's needed. And yes, I still have my Christmas stuff up because that stays up until, like, honestly, the end of January because it's fun and it's still winter, even though it doesn't feel like it <laughs> right now. <laughs> you good boy. You all wet. You poor baby. Okay, while Mushu's eating, I'm going to run in the house real quick and do some thank yous. Also, horse lovers, we have some thank yous to do. This gift was anonymous, but thank you so much for the barn rags. These are going to come in handy. Thank you so much, Polly Ann, for these treats for Buzz. He's going to love them. I'm really excited. Thank you so much, Melinda, for these treats as well. I'm so happy to have some sugar-free options now. Thank you, Bridget, for this super cool lunging cavison. I love the color and the fleece. Can't wait to use it in my training sessions. Really appreciate it. Oh my gosh, whoever got me this grooming kit, this full grooming kit, it is so cute. Thank you so much. There was not a note, so if you want me to do a shout out for you, please send me an email. We appreciate it so much. Ah, I love this, this horse crossing sign. This one also did not come with a note, so thank you so much. I'm gonna put this up. I gotta figure out a good spot. If you wanna support Free Spirit Equestrian, the best way to do that is to purchase something off our Amazon wish list. Link in the description. We do not take donations here, so that's just some way that if you wanna contribute, you can. Right now, high priority items would be saddle pads, bits, and ulcer guards. So that's what we're looking for right now. And I appreciate you horse lovers so much. Thank you. We have one very wet, muddy cob here. He looks awful. I'm sorry. We're trying to do a, a video on you today, Mushu, and you're disgusting. Look at Koa, come here. His collar matches a Mushu's halter. Come show him your collar. Come here. It's okay. Come show him. Look at, isn't that cute? Little matchy match. <laughs> You're a good boy, Mushu. Okay, so let's groom you to the best of our capabilities with our limitations weather-wise. Mushu, Mushu. 
So as you've seen, I use cross ties and I tie horses at the hitching post. However, I really prefer the hitching post, but I do teach my horses to cross tie because you don't know like where you're gonna be, what situation you'll end up in. But yeah, I just prefer the hitching post. I just think it's it's better as far as um, tying and they can put their head down a little bit more, but I do um, use the cross, tie, cross ties as well. Okay, so now to answer your question about, am I going to sell Mushu? Because I get this question a lot. Many of you horse lovers or commenters or viewers are saying, oh, you need to keep Mushu, he's your heart horse. Don't ever sell him, he's bonded with you. Many comments like that, which I really do appreciate then. He is an amazing horse, he's very unique. I bought him because I thought he was very special and I was excited to bring him to my barn. And I do feel as though he has bonded to me and he's unique. However, it's not my direct intention to sell him, but I also cannot predict what the future holds. As most of you know, he's not started under saddle yet. We will get there in June when I feel as though he's old enough and ready to be ridden. He's three years old right now, he'll turn four in June. That's my personal preference is to ride them when they are coming four years old, especially with his breed. Gypsy banners develop a little bit slower. But with that being said, I don't even know what he's like under saddle yet. Um, of course, I know what his personality is like and I wanna figure out what he enjoys doing. All I know is that Jiminy Cricket, my Appaloosa, is my heart horse, my first horse. <laughs> He's like, I'm bored. And my forever horse. Mushu, I'm not sure yet. Again, it's not as though I bought him to say, okay, I'm gonna work with him and then sell him, but it might come to that point. It's also not my intention to keep him. It's one of those things, we'll just see how it plays out. Pretty much any horse that I have and I show videos of and you see their progress, many people are like, don't ever sell that horse. Well, I bond with all of my horses, so if that was the case, if I kept every horse I bonded with, I wouldn't be able to help the next horse. So I'm not a horse hoarder. I don't just buy horses to have, you know, eight to 10 horses just for me, like they are in my program. I'm working on educating them to make them good equine citizens so that other people can purchase them and enjoy them. That's what my mission is. So I cannot just collect horses and I can't just keep every, unique, cool, or horse that I bonded to at my farm for the rest of their life. I am really excited for Mushu's future and to see what we can accomplish together while he is here. So I hope that answers it. <laughs> you are funny. All right, uh, he's a disaster, so let's groom him. First, I'm gonna start squeegeeing him, getting any excess water off of his coat, and then we'll move on to the hard brush. So again, I really can't get him super clean because I'm not gonna wash him because he's gonna go right back out in the mud. Plus, it's still a little bit colder out today too, so I think hosing him doesn't make sense. Now, I could wash his feather, but it's just gonna get muddy again. And with his feather, you have to let it fully dry before putting him back out in the mud. So it doesn't really make sense. So I usually wash his feather about, I don't know, I'd say every couple weeks, but when it's this crappy and muddy of conditions, it's best to just leave it and then treat it and let it fully dry. So that's partially why I'm not gonna be doing that today. And if you excessively wash the feather and the legs, regardless if they have feather or not, you then weaken the layer of the skin, which will allow bacteria to penetrate, which can cause infection. So that's why you don't wanna overly wash unless you let the feather or leg fully dry. I brushed his face and cleaned out his eyes. Then I put some baby oil in his mane and now I'm just finger brushing. Same thing with the mane. You don't wanna excessively brush it or you'll lose hair and it can cause damage and breakage. So what I will do is just spray it with some oil every few days or every other week and then I will brush through with my fingers. Now, if we ever go to an event or we do something special, then I will comb it out, but you don't wanna do it too much. Okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get today grooming wise. I got at least the caked mud off of him and he'll dry up in the stall and get a little bit better. But like I said, it's just pointless to do like washing or anything. He's gonna go right back out in the mud. I'm not just gonna keep him in a stall. But let's do some groundwork, that'll be fun. I'm not gonna put the saddle on him today since he's already super wet. It's just kind of ick out. So yeah, we'll just do some groundwork. Good boy. The weather's been fluctuating a lot. So everybody's been, you know, what the heck's going on? Acting a little weird, but they've all been really good. It's just, you know, goes from negatives all the way up to 60, like that's insane. You little mud ball. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> You're the mud ball.
In this groundwork session, we warmed up at the walk for a little while, trotted in both directions, and then focused on our canter. So it's really loud in here with the rain on the metal roof, but he still did a good job. When the weather changes a lot, sometimes horses can react to that. Mushu and the other horses have all been really good, but you can tell they're a little bit more antsy than usual just because there's been such major fluctuations. I'm happy that Mushu has been a lot more comfortable cantering on the lunge line, and I love that we have winter to focus on all of the small things before we start our riding adventures in June. Well, he's still gross, but he's drying off a little bit, so that's good. Mushu, <laughs> you good boy. You good boy, aren't you? Okay, now I wanna introduce Mushu to the tarp for a little bit. Just a super short little introduction. Let's see how he does. I feel like he's not gonna like it, but we'll see. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. The tarp exercise is more of just a mental exercise, something fun to do, a trust building experience. I don't believe in desensitizing horses by overstimulating them and then them shutting down and freezing. That would mean like throwing all these things over them, making really obnoxious noises, so on and so forth. I do believe that loud people make quiet horses. So, you know, just doing different things, different movements, getting the horse used to that type of environment. However, this is just for fun to see if he likes to walk over it, uh, more proprioception, a different type of footing, like feeling the tarp on him. It's not desensitizing. To me, desensitizing a horse is getting them out in the world, um, experiencing different environments, situations, and that's what's gonna build true training instead of just throwing a bunch of flags and stuff on them, which again, that's fine, but it doesn't truly desensitize the horse. They just might get used to that object at that point in time. For example, if I introduce him to an umbrella, I still think that's a good thing to do, so they're used to the umbrella, but he might react to that differently here in a safe, comfortable environment that he's used to versus being out in the real world. Hence why I think real world experience is key and the most important. So we're gonna do this at Liberty. Um, I have some treats and let's see what he does. Okay, so I'm introducing Mushu to the tarp for the first time. As you can see, he's at Liberty, which means he has no halter on, no ropes. If he chooses to leave, he absolutely can do so. I love how he was super curious and just walked right up to the tarp, started exploring it. I'm rewarding him with some positive reinforcement using my treats. As you can see, I'm reaching my hand out and he just walked on the tarp all by himself. I thought maybe he would be a little bit nervous about it, but he didn't care at all, which just shows that his confidence is growing and that he trusts me and he's willing to learn. I'm so proud of him. Now I'm gonna ask him, keyword ask him, to walk across the tarp over to me. He's still checking it out, so I'm gonna give him his time, let him sniff around and see if he'll come to me. What a good boy. I'm so happy. This is so much fun. I walked back over to the tarp again to see if he would follow and he did. I did put some treats on there, but he didn't find them. So I picked him up and now we're just gonna play on the tarp a little bit more. I'm gonna walk on it and just wave it, make some noise. So this, I don't really consider flooding. Flooding, essentially what I was talking about earlier is when you're doing a million things at once, being really obnoxious and the horse can't process what you're asking. So right now I'm focusing on one thing at a time. I'm moving the tarp so that he can hear the noise and I wanna see how he reacts to it. Now, again, these noises could be out in the real world, but I do want to expose him to one thing at a time in a comfortable space and then take him out in the real world and desensitize him to real life events and objects. That's what I believe in. And then I just touched him with it. And as you can see, I backed off. I wasn't throwing it over his face and waving it around like a maniac because I don't think that's effective. Well, I think that's pretty darn good for his first time seeing the tarp. I guess I was wrong. He does like it. Good boy. Good boy, good boy, 
Ding dong, the smooth you. Good job. You're so good, even though you look like a little wet pony. You're so cute. You did so good. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, don't knock our tripod over there. <laughs> Koa, you jealous? Koa! <gasps> I know, I love you. You say, I know tricks. <laughs> oh, I love my puppy too. Don't worry. I love you too. Okay, horse lovers, I think that's gonna do it for today. I really hope you enjoyed and that that sort of answered your question or gave you a little more of an idea of my thoughts on Mushu and the future. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment. Hey, you're fogging my glasses. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything Free Spirit Equestrian. And I'll see you next time, horse lovers. Bye. Mushu says bye. Peace out. I'm gonna go to Tar. <gasps> what a good boy. Let's see. Self? training and exploration. <laughs>